A couple of weeks back, I did a review of the Lenovo Legion Y7000. I'm going to be placing the link up here so you can have a look at that. Thank you very much because I've got really good response from all the viewers. So while doing the review, I did mention that it is a high productivity laptop and there are a lot of specs that goes into this machine. Now I know there are a lot of people who would be buying this machine particularly for video editing and today's episode is basically going to look into that. I'm going to be putting my Lenovo Legion Y7000 into test and we're going to be seeing exactly how well does it perform for a video editor. So to start with, I'm going to mention that the project files and Adobe Premiere are going to be on my SSD and that's exactly where we're going to run it to gauge the how good of the performance can we get from the SSD that comes on this laptop. So I've got my video editing folder right here. I've got two projects in there. One is a 4K editing and the other one is full HD. In that 4K editing, I've got the 4K footage, a few audio files, few images and then there is a project file which is clean there is nothing inside that if I come back I've got another folder that contains full HD now in this full HD folder I've got the same audio files I've got the same images a same empty project and then I've got a folder that contains full HD footage but this is one of the footage that I did a couple of months back uh, for iWater Lite a link is up here if you want to watch that review so both of these projects contain the same number of clips same audio files same images but obviously the footage is different so let's begin with the video editing test. First, we're going to test the full HD. We're going to load some of our files, simply drag and drop all these folders, save time, and just get into the right test. We're going to give it some time. So basically, all the footage that's been imported is going to conform. You have to keep in mind that at the moment, the setting of my laptop is at maximum performance, and I've got it plugged in. Drag and drop all of this footage right here on my timeline. Some of these audios, the images on my timeline right here. So I've got this footage arranged here in a random order. It's nothing synchronized. So I'm just doing a very simple test to see exactly how good is it to scrub through the timeline, see the performance. You can see that the setting right here is basically set to half. It's not on full. So I'm basically doing all the scrolling here on half. If I just open up one of these clips in my source monitor, this is what it looks like. Now the magic thing. Control M. Get straight into render. I'm going to be rendering this on um, H.264 and this is the standard setting that I usually use for most of my YouTube videos and I think a lot of people would like to use the same setting. High quality 1080p HD. I'm setting up everything as it is. There's nothing that I'm changing. VBR 1 pass 2024. That's a very good decent setting. One thing I do usually prefer doing is basically just using the maximum render quality. Now this will definitely increase the time to render the footage, but it will definitely add a bit of quality to it as well. Save this straight to my desktop. File size is around 1235 MB. I'm just gonna hit the export button. Keep in mind that all of these videos do not have any effects applied on it. There is no color grading, there's no color retouching, there are no effects, transitions that I've applied on these videos. Just the eight minutes and 30 seconds of raw footage which is right there along with images and a lot of audio as well. Here it is guys. The time it took was stunningly only about eight minutes as you can see from the footage. Even the scrubbing, if I just zoom in and just make you go through this footage, is flawless. This is on half settings, but just switch it to full HD. Still, it's not bad. That was the test of full HD and footage. As you can see, the quality is actually very good. And there is no color grading going on. As you can see, multiple tone shifts in my color grading here. There is no color grading whatsoever, no effects, no transitions. And that's about it. And let's switch over to our 4K editing project. Drag and drop right here. Drag and drop all of this footage right here onto my timeline. I'm going to keep it around 8 minutes and 30 seconds, the same as my full HD project. Just going to drag and drop some of those images right here. Just break them apart a little bit. I know this is not how the real world works, but try, I'm just trying to give you an idea. We've got 8 minutes and 30 seconds of a project timeline. I'm just going to zoom into the timeline. I'm just going to scrub through the timeline to see how it would basically preview the 4k footage now as you can see this is running on half on half of resolution setting now this is a full 4k footage as you can see i'm going to switch to full and show you how good will it be if i'm scrubbing through a full hd time now i'm going to hit the magic button Control m go into the render menu select what so basically it's a 4k footage and i'm going to be selecting high quality 1080p because 4k is not yet there where there will be a lot of demand of 4k as a published media so people like to capture information in 4K and then render it as full HD footage. I've got the same 8 minutes 30 seconds of footage right here. Everything remains as it is. The target betrayed, the VBR1 pass, it remains the same. I'm going to use, use maximum render quality. Change this to 4K render. Export. 
So there it is guys, I've got the 4K test rendered and there is our 4K render right here. As you can see, high quality. So guys, here are the findings. We've got around eight and a half minutes of footage rendered on both Full HD and 4K project. The Full HD project took around eight minutes to render. The 4K project took around six minutes to render. You must be thinking, why is it that the Full HD took a little more time? That's because the footage that I had on Full HD was averaging around 60 megabits per second and it was a 50 frames per second footage. However, the footage on 4K was downloaded from the internet. I don't own any of that footage. It's a free footage, you can download it. That footage is present at different variable video rates, starting from 18 megabits per second going up to 90 megabits per second. And all of that 4K footage was at 25 frames per second. So the sequence settings here are basically red cinema, 25 frames per second. And if I just open up Full HD test and I go to sequence settings, as you can see, this is a 50 frames per second project. And that is where the difference comes in. So this is a Full HD footage rendered at 50 frames per second. And you have a look at this footage right here. All of that is basically 25 frames per second. So I've rendered both the clips, both the 4K and the Full HD clips without OBS running in the background and the difference is not there. It takes the same time for me to render the clips. So that's the overall consensus of how good the Legion Y7000 is when it comes to rendering your Full HD and 4K footages. So I hope this really helped the content creation community. If you like the idea of having this test on my laptop reviews, then I can do that in the future as well. Just give me a thumbs up. Now subscribe to the channel. I'll be seeing you very soon with another review, another test, maybe a tips, a tutorial video. Till again, Forest Tech, signing out.